mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us, brother, the vines man to man. Ever sing, we march, we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music lifts us sunward in the triumph song of life. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. I, I hope you caught some of that. I mean, my favorite thing is just the verse three where it says, Thou art giving and forgiving, ever bless, blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of living. Is he your wellspring of joy this morning? Are you letting God be? the wellspring of your joy this morning. I hope so. I hope we're, because, yeah, I get so excited. I don't even know what to say half the time. <laughs> so, yeah, let's just, <laughs> now I forgot what I was doing, Jill. <laughs> song declaring we belong to Jesus. Cause he's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. Come let us sing a song. Sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. Cause he's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. So come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the glory. Oh, come let us 
God, thank you so much for, for your love for us. Thank you so much for the sacrifice you made as we're going to be later remembering all that you did by celebrating communion. Lord, it's as my wife reminded someone this week, God, Christmas just points to Easter. And uh, God, we just pray this morning, remember that this is all, all of this is about you and the freedom we have in you. Thank you for that freedom, Lord. My chains are gone, and I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed that my chains are gone that I've been saved my God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me, and His word, my hope, he will my shield and portion be as long as I've endured. My chains are gone, yes, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be forever mine. You are forever. Would you just be seated with me again? I want to sing just the chorus, Amazing Grace. Can we do it without? Can we just sing? Can we just sing it? I'll take a minute. If you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, if you're a Christian today, just, I want you to just take a minute before we're, we're going to go to prayer here in just a minute. <clears throat> and think about it, you know, grace, that, that's that unmerited favor, right? 
That's called getting something that you don't deserve. Mercy, that's not getting what you do deserve. Rather than being eternally separated from God, he's brought us close to himself for eternity. Can we take, just take a minute, and we're going to focus on this a little bit more in the sermon, but just the whole concept of knowing God and the hope that that brings into our, into our hearts. We're going to just go with it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Praise God. Ushers, if you come, if you have a, uh, this morning, if you didn't pick up a card on your way in or a pen, uh, our ushers are passing out some prayer request cards. And what we've been doing over the last couple years now is, if you have a prayer request, if you want to just write that down and then, uh, and then take some time to pray over that. And then we invite you to bring those and uh, put them up here on the cross. And at that time, uh, the prayer team will be praying over those during this coming week. <clears throat> we want to encourage you. Uh, it was exciting today as we were uh, reflecting over God answers prayer. And it's been exciting to see how just the re prayer requests uh, that have come across uh, really in the last few months that, again, God continues to answer those prayers. And uh, I, I just want to encourage you. I know that several of you uh, <clears throat> are praying for Pastor Saeed and his family. And it's exciting to me that we continue to pray for him and continue to believe for, for God to, if nothing else, give him the strength. Um, few of us are called to the martyrdom that he's facing. He's facing on a almost a, well, a daily basis as he is in prison. And, uh, I think our prayer support for him and his family is very important. But it reminds me, don't give up. Don't stop praying. Whether it's for Pastor Saeed or maybe one of your kids that doesn't know the Lord or a family member or somebody who's sick or somebody who just needs a touch from God, just continue to, to pray until God brings the answer. Because God's hand moves in response to the prayer of his children. Father, we just come before you this morning. And as we bring prayer requests to you, and uh, as we write down the things that are on our heart, some of them are praises, and many of them are requests where, God, we need your help. We need your hand to reach out and to minister. Father, we just pray now as we bring these requests and write them as we pray, God, that you'd hear our hearts, that you'd answer our requests and our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray.
conclude our prayer, we want to pray for our nation today. <clears throat> Not that you need to be reminded, but we certainly do. We need to be reminded that there is a God that is able to reach even a nation that is falling away and in many respects has fallen away. But you are able, God, to turn it around and we pray for revival in our land. We pray for our president. We pray for all of our elected officials. Lord, we pray that each one of them could come to know you as Savior and Lord and could not only say that but live that. <clears throat> could model it. Father, we pray for a land that just needs a, a touch from God, a dry and thirsty land that needs the rain of heaven to be poured out. God, we pray for peace. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of our land in the United States of America. Pray, God, that you'd give us wisdom that we might be able to reach out. God, that we might take your word out to our, neighbor, our neighbors, our friends, our family, our loved ones. God, we pray that you'd bring revival. God, we pray that you'd pour out your spirit on this land. Oh, that we could be refreshed and renewed and revived. Oh, God. Thank you for the hope that we have in you. Thank you for that we can trust you when so many evidences, so many things around us would say, <laughs> give up. But we can trust in you. For you alone are God. There's none beside you. Thank you, God, that we can place our trust in you. We choose to do that now, this morning, here and now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. If the ushers would come again, we're going to take a moment to uh, receive an offering this morning. I want to remind you, we do receive two offerings. Uh, and again, it's not because the first one wasn't enough. But this morning, uh, there's a second offering. We're going to be giving that today. Um, I think everyone here knows that Christmas is coming. Uh, there are several families, many families in this community that we're going to try to help them with Christmas as the community um, makes the effort to do so. And we're with, uh, joined with other churches and stuff to make that happen. So the second offering today will go towards our benevolence fund, which will be used for the the Christmas gifts, and uh, Liz went to the meeting for me last week, and she said that uh, between she and Trudy, they figure out how to spend all of our money. So, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so that means give more, <laughs> so that we can give more, so that we can bless others. Father, thank you again. You have blessed us, and we want to be careful to give you the praise and the glory and honor, and recognize that every good and perfect gift does come down from you. And Lord, as we give today. Uh, in our uh, finances of give our tithes and our offerings and uh, we're faithful to you we also pray that you would bless the benevolence offering today to reach out and be a blessing to folks uh, during this Christmas holiday season that they could join and gather together with us and, and just worship you in Jesus name we pray Amen, Amen. the star of Bethlehem, the word of God. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I completely messed up that song. It's terrible. He's, mm -hmm, star of Bethlehem, the word of God has become flesh. Run to us, a child is born, the Savior of this broken world oh hear the angel voices sing come let us adore him peace has come for our king is with us fully 
God and fully man. He comes for all with open hands. He rules with love on David's throne. All praise belongs to Christ alone. Oh, hear the angel voices sing, come, let us adore him. Peace has come, for our King is with us. King is with us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Kids, if you'll come down here, I want to pray with you as you head out for Children's Church. Come on over here and uh, we'll wait right here together and we'll pray together. You know, I, I want you kids to notice that, you know, as excited as you are to head down, for Children's Church, all these adults are just excited to, to hear God's Word today. Did you know that? Just like you. So let's pray. Okay, Lord, we want to thank you again for each one of these children. We want to thank you that it's by your grace and your grace alone that we can come into a relationship with you and to know you. We want to thank you for these children that they are a blessing to their homes as well as to this church. And it's our responsibility to train them up in the ways of of the Lord, and I'm excited as they get ready for uh, next week as they'll be presenting their Christmas program. We pray, God, that you would help this message to get into their hearts and uh, that it could just come right out of their mouths about sharing that Jesus is born, that Christmas is not just about the presents and the, the food and the fun, but it's an incredible time as they celebrate God's gift to the whole world and to us. Bless them as they go and bless their teachers and and uh, just use them, God, to, to speak to us next week in uh, all the great things about the birth of Jesus, our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. As they're headed out, take just uh, two minutes and 12 seconds. Stand with me if you would and uh, greet some people. Find somebody you don't know yet. And uh, introduce yourself to them. <clears throat> I know you. And I love you. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. Okay. <laughs> Someday you're gonna go home again, but you leave your spirit. You made the world before I was born. But here I am holding you in my arms tonight. Nowhere, nowhere. Jesus saw me. Someday you're gonna stretch them out and save us 
Good morning. I hear people saying that back to me, so that must be my cue. So, welcome this morning. Hi. I need to like do a cheer or something. I am so glad you are excited to see everybody here today. I can tell you are all very excited to see all these people here. So go ahead and mosey on back to your seats. This morning, you may have noticed that the platform looks a little bit different. We are prepping and gearing up for next week. Um, we decided if we can't have snow outside, we're going to have snow inside. So uh, it looks beautiful, the uh, snowflake garland. So I feel like today I kind of have flashcards because there are so many things coming up and I know you cannot see the screen. So your bulletin um, is very, very important for like keeping your brain intact. I always kind of feel about this time of year that if I don't stand perfectly still, and I tip that everything is just going to fall out my ear and I'm going to forget everything because there's so much going on. Um, but hopefully it's all good things. First of all, I want to let you know this first paper, Exhibit A. Um, next week is the Children's Christmas Program. And um, they have been practicing very hard. We've been hearing them a little bit um, as Sunday morning goes on. They are very enthusiastic. So that is next Sunday. Invite some people. It is a great time of year. People enjoy coming to Christmas programs. It's a wonderful time to be able to give them um, some encouragement about what a wonderful season we have. Um, also, this is not in your bulletin, but the greeters have it out at their booth for you to pick up one. Next Saturday is the children's uh, dress rehearsal for the program. Um, if you want to, if you want to try your patience, come on and show up. It's awesome. <laughs> um, but during that time, the youth is doing a fundraiser with babysitting, so that um, you can do a little bit of Christmas shopping, or maybe you can go on a date if it's that t season is kind of busy. Um, get time away with your spouse. So um, the youth is doing the fundraiser for babysitting, and it's all on this piece of paper during and after the. Um, the dress rehearsal next week. Coming up, we have a women's retreat, a refresh and renew. It's a one-day event. Um, very, it's a great, and last year was very refreshing and wonderful time. We're going to do this again. We have a different speaker, um, Levita Bueller. Some of you may know her. Um, there are some little cards that if you would like to purchase for people, for somebody, maybe a gift idea, stocking stuffer, if you'd like to pay for their retreat and they can open it up on Christmas, it's all taken care of and you can reserve their spot. It's $20 for the day now and then after, what's the deadline? January 4th, after January 4th, it goes up to $30. So go ahead and uh, give them that information now so they can reserve your spot. And Marilyn will be out um, in the foyer after church with those cards that you can purchase. We have FPU signups coming up. This is not in your bulletins. I had to make myself a little note so that I remembered to announce it. Um, FPU is coming up. There are signups out there ready to go. And then the last thing that's in your bulletins is this handy dandy calendar because there are wonderful things coming up this season. And just to highlight a couple of them, on the 21st, we are going to be having a special Christmas service, and then the evening of the 21st is caroling. Um, a, lot of t a lot of fun go to go out and just sing until we're too cold to handle anymore and we're off key, so we come back and have co cocoa and cider, and it's lots of fun. So those are coming up. Um, once again, if you didn't do it last week, this week, take this home and put it on your fridge so that you don't forget that it's coming. Um, we will also be having Christmas Eve communion this year. So um, we do enjoy having a time to just come together on Christmas Eve. It's, it's about 40 minutes long and it's just a time to um, really remember that Christmas is really about what's coming. And that's exciting because Jesus' birth, he came so that he could die for us. Easter is coming. I'm so excited. I love Easter. She's going to end up preaching if you're not careful. <laughs> you know. Uh, I, uh, as I said earlier, and I'm, you're going to hear me say this quite often, and I, and I am going to try to do everything that I can to, to talk you into this. Um, 
I want you to talk Christmas up. Every day, every minute of the day, I want you to take every opportunity. Now, we're talking about in, uh, I don't even remember where we were talking about, maybe it was Sunday school somewhere, but, you know, we're going to have opportunities uh, in, during this month that you, you'll never have any other time. Uh, some of you have a lot of unsaved family members. Some of you have uh, people that are, you know, neighbors and such. That they just need Jesus, and you're going to have opportunities. So, so kind of get ready for this. Um, <clears throat> and let's use this whole month of December for, for a month of Christmas. You're going to hear about it from the pulpit uh, each time, and you're going to hear about it uh, in letters. And you're gonna do, My hope is that you just talk it up because... This is a, an exciting day, and it's, it's, it's kind of amazing because, uh, you know, Jesus is the reason, putting Christ back in Christmas. You've heard all these slogans. I mean, you heard those like all your life kind of stuff, you know. Uh, but if you notice, we kind of really need to struggle to make that happen because it's not necessarily happening. And, uh, and so we uh, need to be careful and need to be... Uh, you need to make plans to do exactly that and uh, let people know about Jesus. Now, the ushers are going to come out again. These guys are working hard today. And I uh, told Tom this way, he says, he went to the BSU game last night, and I know personally that he didn't get home like till 1230, huh? Like, yeah, go Broncos. Anyway, so uh, we're having them do it. Go ahead and start passing. They've got uh, pens as well as paper to hand out, something upon which to write as well as with which to write, but uh, we, we, we're doing this so Tom can stay awake, all right, and uh, no yawning, Tim's over here yawning, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's rugged, you know, some of you people really, really put me to sleep, I'm telling you, you scare me a little bit out here, but uh, <clears throat> I got to hurry up and Steve, we need to hurry, we need to get these out. Because uh, what I need you to do, and I'm going to give you only a minute. Okay, don't, don't read the paper yet because uh, it's going to happen. I want to make sure everybody has the same amount of time to, to get this done. I know Andrew's going to have to write so much on this. You're going to have to write really fast, okay? You can do that. You know, are you right-handed? You're going to have a hard time doing it that way. Okay, uh, but, uh, <laughs> oh, don't you love preachers? Okay, all right, now everybody, you got one minute. I want you to write down, there are a lot of things that people take for granted, all right? I want you to take just a minute, I'm only going to give you one minute, and just write, because you're going to notice, and I'm going to go ahead and start you now, okay? Go ahead and start now, writing down a list of things that people take for granted. And, you know, I started this, <laughs> I started this list on Monday, and by Monday night, I had over 200 things. And so I just thought, boom, boom. So go ahead and write down some things that, that people take for granted. That you know, those, and you can make it those other people, you know, that they take for granted. Just write down things that, uh, that, are, that are taken for granted. Okay? And uh, I guess I should have had some music playing. Do, 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 That's enough of that music. Oh, that's better. I was really hoping they were going to sing the doo-doo song this morning, you know? Maybe next week. You should have at least ten things written down by now. Okay, now go ahead and put your name at the top so you, you get your name on there so everybody will know who it is. No, not that. Uh, now that you got your name on top, what I want you to do is I want you to trade that with somebody, not in your family. Trade that with somebody else. Uh, and 
You got about 12 seconds. You can trade as many times as you go, but, but uh, trade that. As soon as, does everybody have? Does everybody have a list other than your own? Okay, as soon as you get to where we have a list. Okay, I want, to, I want you to have about 20 seconds just to look at everybody else's. You got to trade. You got to keep trading. Keep trading until you, yeah. Okay, okay. Take a second and, and look and see at that list. See if there's anything that somebody came up with that you didn't. You don't have to shout it out. Okay. You don't have to shout it out. But you got about 20 seconds just to read their list and to see if there's anything, uh, anything new or something that you didn't see there before. Okay, looks like everybody got it. Okay, trade one more time with somebody else that you're, is not a family member or somebody, you know, trade. And keep trading until everybody gets traded. That way if, uh, if it gets hung up, then... Okay, you got about 15 seconds now to read these lists again to see if there's something else that, uh, you know, you got to see if they, somebody might have missed something or, or whatever else. Uh, it's a great way to share, share all, of our, all of our different thoughts and all of the things that we think. Okay, you got about five more seconds to get through that list. Okay. Okay, we should be pretty close to everybody through that. Okay, now can you hand them back to the original person? All right. That's why I had you put your name. This might be a great way for you to meet somebody. Yeah. Did some. Okay, is everybody. Okay, take your Bibles if you would. Turn to the. the the book of Romans chapter 5. We're going to get there in just a minute. But there's something... I, uh, did anybody notice, anybody missed anything or um, that you'd like to tell them a few things that maybe they should have seen that have been taken for granted? How many of you got things like, did you see things like spouse? Anybody see that kind of a thing? Yeah. Friends? How many of you saw things like water? Gas, I gotta be careful on that one, okay. Power, power this last week. Yeah, gasoline, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, how about uh, your, your salvation? Your relationship with Jesus Christ? Uh, how about Christmas? Holidays? Uh, what? Bible, yeah. All right. Uh, it's, you know, you can, you can get into that. You can, uh, in fact, I, I thought I didn't want to get too heavy on that, but. Uh, you know, there are a lot of things that you take for granted. One of those things, and I remember uh, talking with a person, and I understand this, but, you know, uh, you take for, for granted that uh, parents, that you're going to outlive your children. You know? Uh, you, and uh, husbands and wives, you understand, you think about outliving your spouse. Uh, Mabel and I have an agreement uh, that I get to die first, uh, even though she said I already tried it once. You know, but she said if I mess up one more time, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what the if on that was. Um, anyway, uh, there are so many things that we take for granted, and and I want us to 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 look at this. God has really laid something on my heart, and I just I it's just really heavy on my heart. So I think this is what He wants us to look into, and uh, because something that that we have. And, and I, I want to be really careful as I say this. If you're a Christian today, um, this is something that you have. If you're not a Christian today, I, I, uh, I just want to let you understand that uh, I want you to hear about this. Um, because I think you may want to hear about this. Because I think it's something good. Uh, there's something that I, I want to look at that... Um, this is really one of those real pluses about being a Christian. And I know that sometimes you have a hard time uh, as a Christian. Sometimes you, you, uh, you, you remember the old, some of you were raised with this. Maybe things are changing. As much, you, you know, a Christian, you always tell a Christian because they can't do this and they can't do that and they can't do this and, you know, can't do that. 
And, uh, you know, we, we, it's really sad when we define ourselves by all the things that we can't do. And what we need to do is to do, uh, is to find really the freedom that we have in Christ and find out what, what life is all about. I told you all about, and I know I've said it before, but the, the paving of, the, of Highway 21, it was such a, uh, the repavement, it was so cool because, you know, when you came up, came up out, of the, out of the canyon and you came up there, and it was just blacktop everywhere. It was really weird how, how it felt so scary. In fact, we were talking about it. I think it was Steve who said he was worried because he didn't have those barriers on the end and all, or on the side. And all of a sudden, he felt like there was a cliff down there that he'd never really noticed before. And, you know, the, they got those barriers in there. And all of a sudden, especially in that big yellow bus I drive, everything just felt so narrow. I thought, man, there's there not even two lanes here, you know. And then finally, they got those white lines in. And, uh, and it, oh, it started feeling better. Then they got all the dash lines in there. And, and it's amazing. They got three lanes there. Lots of room for everything. And it's kind of like, you know, I, I really believe it's like what God has for us in the, in the Bible and the teaching. You know, this whole world out there can be really scary. But there are lines in there, guidelines, so that we can know where we need to be driving. We need to know where we, where we need to be walking. And, and so it's a good thing. We have something today that, that I, I think it's really important for us to, to understand that we have and, and that we, I think we take it for granted a lot. I know I do. And, and it's only available and, and really wonderfully available. Fantastically available to those of us who know Jesus Christ. It's an advantage. Something really good. And, and that's hope. That's hope. And this season is about hope. And this whole season, is a, it's a reminder about hope. That the Son of Man, the Savior has been born. And it's something really exciting. So we're just going to take just a few minutes before we receive communion. And I want us to, to look at this subject on hope. Um, Romans chapter 5, if you're there, um, that's page 1752 in those black Bibles. Uh, if you can find that. Romans chapter 5. We're going to start with verse 1. We're just going to read through verse uh, verse 8, um, <clears throat> therefore, and again, you have to read all of chapter 4 and 3 if you really want to know what the therefore is there for, right? But anyway, therefore, because of what he said in the past, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only, see, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom He has given us. You see... At just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man some might, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Father, I just pray you'd speak to our hearts this morning. And remind us of the hope that we have. The hope that we have in you. Bless your word to our hearts and our lives, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to be really careful. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God. I love this whole thought. How many of you have ever thought God is mad at you? You know, uh, you know, it is so incredible. Even when you're not saved. Even before you come to know Jesus Christ as Savior Lord. Did you know he's not mad at you? God loves you. And he may not be pleased with your behavior and all this, whatever. But it's very important to understand that while you're still... This is so important. Did you know that God didn't wait for you to get good enough before he sent Jesus? Amen. Which is really a good thing. Because if he's waiting for that to happen, anybody kind of look around in the world right now and say, well, well maybe he'd still be waiting? You know? While we're still sinners, Christ died for us. It's an incredible thought. That's how much God loves us. And it's important for us to know we have peace with God. I, I think it's such an incredible thing because I know some people that are kind of afraid of God. I know people that are afraid to pray because they're afraid if they start talking to God, he's going to take out the hammer. You know, he'll know where their address is all of a sudden, I guess. 
you know, as if he doesn't know where you are now. Anyway, but it's a really important for, thing for us to understand, this, this peace we have, we've gained through faith, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. I wish that we would spend more time thinking about heaven. Now, I'm not talking about sitting up there on a cloud playing a harp. I think some of you are harping enough right now, okay? You can, that was a joke, you might have missed that. But anyway, but we just need to think about heaven. We need to think about the eternal presence of God, where there is no sin, there's no suffering, there's no dying, there's no disease, there's no, uh, th th nothing bad. Just the awesome, fantastic, and we, you know, we need to, to focus on that. And, and to think about, because that is where our, our hope is. The hope is in the glory of God. Now, heaven is not just, remember heaven is a person as well as a place. Heaven is, is a place. It's a place where we're going. But heaven is a person. It's the presence of God. And, you know, we will be present with God. What a, just the incredible thought of that just, uh, just kind of makes me go, wow. I kind of like that. I think I kind of, because I want you to know that, when we are, uh, you know, and he goes on into talking about how through, you know, suffering produces, you know, perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope. <coughs> if you have never been to the bottom, if you've never gotten to the end of the rope and found that you have to tie a knot, and just hold on. If you've never gotten there, you probably don't understand the fullness of the hope that we have in Christ. No matter what else. I, I love it. We, we love to quote the scripture. You know, Paul tells us, I am convinced that neither height nor depth, nor breadth, nor things that are, nor th things present, things to come. I, you know, I, I love, we love that scripture. But do you know where he was able to, from what well he drew that? That was from the well of, you know, shipwrecks, trials, uh, bit by a snake, you know. I mean, all kinds of stuff that he went through. That was where he drew that absolute assurance, that confidence. And this is one of the things I want you to know that, you know, sometimes this hope becomes this kind of ethereal, kind of out there kind of thing. God wants hope to be a practical thing for us. God wants us to understand that not only in, in what I have faced, but also in understanding no, no matter what I do face, I have hope. In this world today, we live around people that are utterly without hope. They're trying to go through the world. They're trying to find reasons to, to have confidence. They're trying to have reasons to, to look up. Don't take the hope that you have for granted. Be prepared, Paul writes, to be able and be willing to tell every person about the hope that is within you. I, I, I love this. The hope that is within you. <clears throat> we were harassing uh, one of our drivers, Sam. Uh, she's gone to this uh, uh, this uh, New Beginnings. It's a diet kind of a thing, and and uh, some of it, I guess, they do <coughs> hypnosis or whatever. And so, um, so we were harassing her the other day. Say, what do you do? Just kind of sit there and then, um, calories are bad. Chocolate said no, no. Hamburgers, oh, those are bad too, you know. Uh, we, were, we were just kind of harassing her about that. And because, you know, we get this whole ethereal thing about the, the things that are within us and trying to get this and, you know, if you can think peace, then you can get what. I want you to know that the hope that is in you, if you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, it's the Holy Spirit of God who lives and dwells within you. And he is the one that brings out that hope. And as I said, I think that we need to strive more and more and more and more to be so filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember God's definition of fullness? 
We talked about that. God's definition of fullness is overflowing. God's definition of fullness is not just barely enough. God's definition is, is overflowing. And we need to be so full with the Spirit so somebody takes that hammer, right, smashes a sausage. What happens? What's on the inside comes out. So that when life comes and smashes, it, smashes you, what's on the inside comes out. It's that hope that is in you. Okay, three quick things, th three quick things real quick. Number one is a Christmas warning. And this is, you know, when you have so much, don't fall into the trap of relying on the same things that other, others have. Our hope is in the Lord. Please understand that. Why so many Americans are having trouble today is because we think that we have so much because we are a great country and a great nation and we have great people. We have all the smartest people. We have all the, you know... You can go on and on and on and think about that. We do have the smartest. I think most of the smart people live right here in Idaho City. Don't you? Amen. Yeah. And then there are those of us that come here to church. Anyway, but in, in, in Malachi chapter 7, verses 4 to 7, this is so important. There's a, there's a Christmas morning. I want to give you this Christmas morning. Because to understand that, that the joy of Christmas and the hope of Christmas and the wonder of it all and everything, is, it's not about because of what's going on here in the United States of America. But it's because of what Jesus Christ has done, what God has done through him and in us. Malachi chapter 7, verses 4 to 7. And we didn't have the, I didn't know we weren't going to have the projector. So anyway, if you can turn real quickly. Huh? Micah? Is that what I said? <laughs> I knew it was that. Micah, excuse me. Micah chapter 7. Uh, if I pop that up on my iPad, it's better. Anyway, Micah chapter 7, verses 4 through 7 says, The day of your, your watchman has come, the day God visits you. Now is the time for their confusion. Do not trust a neighbor. Put no confidence in a friend. Even with her who lies in your embrace, be careful of your words. For a son dishonors his father. A daughter rises up against her mother. A, mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the members of his own household. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. Lord, I wait for my God, my Savior. My God will hear me. It's important that we understand that, you know, you look around at all the stuff that's going on. When, when we're looking at other nations coming against nations, when we look at other things coming against us, we need to understand that that is not what, is, is what God gives the warning. God gives the warning that, that we need to learn to keep our hope and our trust and our faith in Him. You know, we, everybody gets all upset. Because, uh, and I don't know if it's true or not, but it continues to come up, and I see it on the internet and stuff, but they want to take off uh, on our money, that in God we trust. You know, they want to, they want to take that off. And my, my statement is, yeah, I love to see it on there. I think it's important. But what's more important, and in all honesty today, folks, that's really an awful big lie. When we have a, how many trillion dollar debt? Eighteen trillion dollars. You know, folks, we're, we're trusting in ignorance and, and just absolute, uh, what, oh, I just lost the word, uh, we're boasting. We're, we're putting all of our confidence in us. We can just print the money. We just keep cranking it out. We'll just put our trust, we'll, we'll back it up with our army if nothing else, you know. And that's what it's going to come down to eventually. We know that, right? You read the back of the book, didn't you? Read, read the back of this book, and it, it'll tell you about what's coming. <coughs> but don't trust. This is the Christmas morning. Don't place your hope. Don't build your hope on what this country can do. Don't build your hope on what somebody can do for you or what a person can do for you. But our, our trust needs to be in God. Romans 8, 22 <clears throat> through 25. It says, We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our, our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. And the hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what uh, we do not yet have, we wait patiently for it. I really hate that he adds that last. I can say we wait for it. But waiting patiently, that's the hard part, isn't it? You know? But what we need to understand in this, and what he's talking about is, folks, when, when we get to that point where we just kind of kick back and think we've got it all, when we sit back and forget that our hope is, it's not 
in the things that we've amassed. It's not, you know, that I've got a bigger house than, than he does and she's got a bigger house than I do or I've got a fancier car or I've got a, you know, it's not about these things but our, our hope. And we've got to t get this thinking. You know, how many of you kids, I'll just pick on the kids around, how many of you kids are looking for something special under the tree this year? Oh, just say yes. Raise, raise your hand. Raise your hand. You know, you bunch of liars. You know, <laughs> get there. Yeah, good job. Pete's he's still a kid too. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm looking for something special under the tree. I'm looking for you know. I'm looking you know, and it's so incredible. I you know I love it the 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 little illustration about the kid that had a birthday party, and all of his kids, all of his friends wanted to come to his birthday party. And so they were asking him if they could come. And so he talked to his mom, why is everybody asking if they can come? And he said, well, they just want to play with your toys. So what he did is when his birthday party came, he would go and he'd go, oh, look at this big old present, what's in there? And he'd open it up and it was a Tonka truck. And all the boys were, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he takes it, I'm going to put this up here on a shelf. And the guys were going, oh, bummer. So. Quick, open up another present, you know, so he opens them all up and, you know, and they, oh, wow, it's a train set, you know, and so they take it and I'm going to put this up on the shelf and, uh, you know, we're running from one fun thing to another, we're getting, you know, as long as we can run to the next fun thing, we don't stop and think about what's happening. Folks, our hope is in the Lord. God gives us peace, gives us joy. And that's why I say there are benefits of, of knowing the Lord. And again, I hate to say it, but I love it. My favorite scripture, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his many benefits. It is good to be a Christian. It is good to be saved. And I'm telling you, the Bible tells us that we have, there is sin that has pleasure for a season. Oh, don't get trapped in that. Don't get wound up in that stuff. God has a, a hope for us. Now I want to move on. I know I've got to hurry here. Uh, with a Christmas promise. I love promises. I love promises. But a promise is only as good as somebody who makes it. Right? Now I want you to know this is a cool promise. I love this. Uh, Romans 15, which if you jump down just a few more pages back. Romans chapter 15, verses 7 through 13. <coughs> I want to read this. is so cool. It, it starts off, this is just good. Romans 15. Accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, to confirm the promises made to the patriarchs, so that the Gentiles may glorify God for His mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to your name. Again it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with His people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Sing praises to Him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in Him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, it's such an incredible... I'm going to ask a real dumb question. It's only dumb because of we're in the 21st century and because we're down the road about 20 centuries from when it happened. How many of you believe that Jesus is coming? Okay. How many believe that he, he, that the Messiah, the Savior of the world, is 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 born, has been born? You know, you believe. You know, it's an incredible because down the road away, you know, there were so many people that desired and were looking. And I, I get to looking at this, and I, it's an exciting thing to me. As surely as God promised the Messiah, as surely as God promised that there would be one that would come to take away the sins of the world. Guess whose sins those were, by the way. <clears throat> don't point fingers at anybody, all right? Because, but it's incredible. And it wasn't one you were good. All cleaned up and, and looking good. Even smelling good there, Pete. You know, it's it cool. You know, God took us, you know, all the sins of the world. He sent the Messiah. He sent Jesus Christ. And as surely as He did that, we have the hope of every promise that God has for us. Now, it's an incredible thing. It is just an incredible thing. How many believe that Jesus is coming back? You know? Uh, as surely as Jesus came the first time, as surely as God brought him, as surely as just at the right time. We were talking this week, and I, I love it, talking to people. And You know, I got saved just at the right time. 
And it was interesting. I was talking to some kids. Some of uh, uh, oh, three or four of us were talking about because we got saved in our teenage years. And teenage years can be real turning points in our lives. And sometimes it's a little bit scary. In fact, driving bus, one of the things I've found out, for some of you parents that are really worried right now, let me just tell you that most of these kids actually will turn out okay. <laughs> you know? And if, if you have any real worries about that, get out your mirror. There were people that had their doubts about you. I can guarantee it. Because <laughs> I know, well, I won't go there. But it's important for us to understand, as sure as God's promises are, that's why our hope, that's why our hope is solid. And we need to understand, and it's, please, do not build it on any other foundation. We talk in uh, 1 Corinthians today, uh, in our Sunday school class, that Christ is that foundation. I want you to know, if Christ is the foundation for your house that's being built, you know, we talked about being, you know, judged by fire, wood, hay, and stubble, and all that stuff. Understand that um, <coughs> in San Francisco now, and I know in a lot of places in California, they have to build houses, buildings and everything that are earthquake-proof. How many of you believe that there is such a thing? You know, I mean, you can do what you can do. But I can guarantee you, it's not earthquake-proof. I want you to understand, there's something on which we can build our lives that will never be shaken. I'm going to get out my green board here in a minute. Amen. Folks, you've you got to take that home, take it to the bank. You've got to understand this deeper than any other depth. It's not the promises that, and I've got to be careful, Obama can make. It's not the promises that any president, that any, that any Congress, that any, anything can make. But it's the promises that God can make. Those are the things that we want to rest our lives on. And when we have hope, folks, we need to understand that we've got, we've got the answer. The biggest thing, people, if you lose hope, you are not going to survive. You are not going to survive. And it's so important for us to understand we have hope. And it's not built on our allowance that our parents give us. It's not built on our job that our boss, he doesn't give us, but he gives, anyway. But our hope is built on Jesus Christ. If you're building your hope anywhere else, I promise you, it will shake, it will come down, and it will fall. Third thing, and this is where I want to get to today, because we're going to have communion here in a minute. But Christmas, this is a, a, a Christmas to celebrate. Our Christmas uh, it came in the form and in the shape of, of a baby and it will end with the king of kings and the lord of lords now in case you're wondering about isaiah 9 6 and 7 this is hard for me to to say to read because i always want to sing it you know for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name well, shall be called it wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order and to establish it with judgment, with justice. From henceforth, even forever and ever, the zeal of the, Lord's of the, of the, whoops, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. How many of you want to start singing, hallelujah? You know, I... Boom. Oh, folks, it's more than just a great catchy tune. It's the truth. It's the truth. Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign forever. We will be in a kingdom that is ruled and reigned by him. Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. So I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and true. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven are following him, riding on white horses, and dressed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of fury of the wrath of God Almighty on his robe and on his thigh. He has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This Jesus that came as a baby, this Jesus that came as a promise from God is the hope of all the world. And if you know him, I just want to tell you, get ready to share that. You've got a whole month here. You're going to have opportunities you've never had before. I'm telling you, I'm convinced of one thing. You can't share what you don't have. 
and you must share what you do have. Jesus didn't save you so you could just sit there and be happy. This is going to be a surprise to somebody. He saved you so you could open your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I know others are trying to shut you up, right? But it's important to understand. We have something to celebrate at Christmas time. If you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you have something to celebrate. You know the hope of this world. You know the hope that goes beyond time and eternity. It, it's, it's the hope that not just everybody knows. On the back of your handout... There's a, you think we can sing it, Jill? I, initially, I, we weren't going to. <clears throat> but before we receive communion, I just want to, some of these songs are so powerful. You know, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand First verse My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ's solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gift my anchor holds within the veil on Christ's solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking the last verse when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne on Christ's solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand folks you've got a foundation to stand on you've got the very promise of God that he'll always be with you, no matter what comes at us. The Bible tells us this is an incredible thing. In the very gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Turn to somebody and say, I think that's a good promise. If you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord today, that's the promise that he has for you. This morning as we celebrate communion, and communion is a celebration. It's a very solemn, very holy celebration. Because it's a celebration of the victory of the cross. And not just what the victory of the cross, but the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you receive the elements today, would you hold them? And uh, let's just take a little bit of time this morning to, to look at our lives. If there's sin in your life, guess what? You know, as a Christian, guess what? The Bible doesn't tell you sulk and hide and run away. If you have sin, the Bible says confess it. And he's faithful and righteous to, to, or he's faithful to cleanse us from sin on righteousness. Okay, sometimes I get mixed up, but he forgives us and he cleanses us. And he wants us to come to him now with our sin instead of hiding it from him. Confess it to him. Turn to him now. Uh, and then again, live for him and understand the hope that you have in him. Ushers, would you come as we... Hand out the emblems again. Just hold them if you would. Take this time for doing some evaluation of your own life. If you need forgiveness, this is a time to look to God for that and to receive His grace.
closed and without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you where sin runs deep your grace is more where grace is found is where you are and where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you so teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay and when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay so teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay and when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you all I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you sure where you are today.
my hope is that somehow today that God can speak to your heart about the hope that he has for you. I'm convinced that when it comes to trials and tribulations, there's three phases. You're either just coming out of one, you're in the middle of one, or you're about to go into one. But see, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, he's my anchor and holds the secure. I need him in my life. And he gives me hope. The hope that's based on the promises of God. This morning, and I know you don't know every hope that's in the Bible. I, I know you don't know every promise that God has for you in the Bible. But I would just challenge you over the next week or two just to take time and read Get out your little Gideon Bible and look where it talks about the promises of God. And just look at the promises that God has for us. We have hope in Jesus Christ, no place else. So we come to the Lord today to celebrate communion. The hope that we have was bought with a price that we should never take for granted. It cost God his only begotten Son. It cost Jesus the coming to earth as a man, taking on his flesh and continually being the Son. It cost the Holy Spirit the, the ministry of reconciliation in our lives and always being here as our comfort and our help, our guide and our friend. And yet because of God's love for us, he was willing to give. That's the kind of God we have. That's the kind of hope in which we need to live. Let's take just a moment before we receive the bread. And Father, we thank you for the gift of love. We thank you that you gave to us out of your love. That you gave to us your son. Thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to suffer all of the shame, all of that punishment, all, all that that was mine. It was due me. But the mercy of God was such that you received in your own body the penalty of my sin, the shame, that the, even the alienation from God. cruelty of this world poured out on you, the hatred. In the same way, God, you hate sin. Thank you for paying that penalty. And now we can be set free, that even in our bodies we can receive healing. In our minds we can receive healing. We can receive help and health. And thank you for the hope that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's receive the bread together. I'm always reminded when we receive the cup that Jesus said he looked forward to this day. He looked forward to the day that he would share in the communion with his disciples. And he said he still looks forward to another day when he will receive it anew with us in his kingdom. It's an exciting day that lies ahead for us. The day when we'll share together at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We'll, we'll share the total and complete victory of the cross. As we're, we receive the, the forgiveness of our sins. We receive forgiveness from the penalty of the sin. We receive forgiveness in the power of the sin. And eventually even from the very presence of sin. That's the hope we have in Christ. Let's pray again. Father, we thank you again for this cup. 
that we can share. I thank you that we can share it knowing that our sins are forgiven, knowing that they never will they be held against us, even when we stand before you. They will be paid in full because of what Jesus did for us, that he shed his blood. Lord, as we receive this cup, may we receive it in hope. May we receive it knowing that there's going to be a day when we share this together with you in, in his kingdom. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin and gives us hope for all of eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's receive the cup together. We take just a minute just to praise God, just to thank Him for it. Thank you for life that we have. The life that we can't give ourselves, that no one else can give. Life that we have through Jesus Christ. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Praise your name, God. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? <clears throat> As we leave this place today, would you just understand that God has a whole month out here? I believe he's planned it. You know, because the Bible doesn't tell us to remember his birth. Did you know that? But the Bible is very explicit. It tells us to remember his death and his resurrection until he comes. So let's just take the opportunity that we have especially here in America where they, they celebrate it. I mean, they've been celebrating it since before Black Friday, right? Or I get confused on which days are which anymore. Share with people that Jesus has come. Let's close in prayer. Father, as we leave this place, I pray that you would go with us and that we would take that message out to everybody we have, that we have a hope. An incredible, fantastic, wonderful hope that, that floats no matter what else is going on. It's a hope that's powerful and will take us clear into the presence of God where we will dwell forever. Where He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In His name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you as you go. Uh, you can put cups back there. You can bring them up here to the front. Give at least 97 people a hug or a handshake. Tell them you're glad to see them in church and to tell them you've got hope because you know Jesus. <clears throat> go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Tell it on the mountain that 